Hi everybody, what's brewing? I'm Mike Biana and this is Coffee Talk. Prior to our guest's arrival at the University of Miami, there have only been a handful of presidents. Now, as the sixth president of the University of Miami, he makes a second. Joining me at the coffee table today, of course, is none other than the University of Miami president himself, Dr. Julio Frank. Dr. Frank, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for the invitation. We're so glad you're here, uh, partially because you've had such a storied life and storied career so far. And so I think it's fitting that you're here now at a world-renowned city like the city of Coral Gables and the University of Miami. What brought you here? Out of all the places in the world you could have gone to, you went to the U. Why? Well, I, I was very moved by three factors. First, the geographic location. I mean, being right. in the Miami-Dade area uh, it just gives, th this is one of the most cosmopolitan cities yes. in the entire world. Uh, and it is also the crossroads for all of the Americas. And since I, I come from Mexico, being closer to Latin America, the Caribbean, and North America was very, very attractive. Second is the stature of the university. The University of Miami has been on an upward trajectory, and there's this palpable desire to continue to, to move upwards. And third is my own interest in universities. I'm convinced that universities are essential if we are to navigate successfully this very complicated 21st century. And so I had been in a university, uh, I, uh, but as a dean, I, I had become very interested in the larger context of universities. So right. those were the three attractions for me to come here. And those are all really great attractions to the University of Miami. A lot of students from out of state, within the state, come here, faculty, professors, teachers, and you name it. So let's talk a little bit about your history, though, your career, how you got to come to the U. Well, I, I would say that uh, my whole life has been determined by an event that happened when my paternal family was forced to leave Germany in the 1930s. Yes, sir. And uh, they were received with uh, open arms by a country that was poorer economically but much richer in, in terms of tolerance uh, and acceptance. And that country was Mexico. Because that saved my family's life and made my own life possible, I've always be grown with a sense of the need to give back. Right. And that's what led me to study medicine. Within medicine, I studied public health, which is, you know, in public health, th the whole of society is your patient. You try to look at why people get sick in the first place and, and act so that people do not get sick in the first place. Wow. Um, so I've devoted my life to, to, to public health. Um, and I've gone, you know, uh, sometimes being in academia, doing research, but I've always done research that can be applied to solve problems. Sure. And that led me eventually from being in an academic position to working in an international organization, the World Health Organization, wow. and then becoming the Secretary of Health for my country, for Mexico. I did that for six years. As a non-partisan member of, of an course. administration, um, I do not belong to any political party. I was brought in as an expert, um, but I was able to do a lot because uh, you know I, I was able to talk with every group, and, wow. and I found that health is a very unifying topic. And now I'm back in academia, but again, very much with the idea of addressing uh, promoting research, education, and at the same time addressing the most pressing problems that face our communities. You alluded to growing up and working for Mexico, in Mexico. Um, so obviously you're a Spanish-speaking uh, person. You're the first president in the University of Miami's history to be a native Spanish speaker. Do you think that lends to a special ability to communicate and connect with the students, the faculty, and the community at large. You talked about being here in Miami-Dade County. You know, I'm, I'm very, very proud to be the first Hispanic president of the University of Miami. At the same time, you know, <clears throat> I realize I have, like all of us, multiple dimensions of my identity. Right. And, uh, and I think when one looks at one's own biography, one discovers that you know we are many things. In, that in fact we have this inner diversity <laughs> within us. So um, I'm, I'm trying to to embrace that inner diversity, so I can be effective as everybody's president. And and that's w I'm, I'm emphasizing a lot the topic of of diversity, but also going a step beyond diversity to developing a sense of belonging. I right. want everyone at the University of Miami 
uh, regardless of your race, ethnicity, national origin, the language, your, your native uh, tongue, your sexual orientation, uh, uh, your socioeconomic status, to feel that the University of Miami is their place and that they really belong there. Sure. Now, you talked about being everybody's president, and I love that because you want to be really a man of the people. You have certain plans to move on in terms of not just academics and inclusion, but um, for everybody. Everyone has different issues that they want to address. So how do you go about doing that? Well, I think, <clears throat> uh, first of all, we, uh, you know, we need to, to start with making our values explicit. And I, I did that on the first day I arrived. Uh, I, I said, you know, universities play a very important role because they have to serve as examples or models to the larger society of values and behaviors we would like the larger society to embrace. And what are those values? You know, it's first of all embracing diversity. Uh, second of all, uh, embracing tolerance and respect to different points of view, being able to hold conversations, some of which may be difficult because it, some of them are conversations where we're talking with people with whom we disagree. But the ability to speak in, speak in a respectful, tolerant way absolutely. is absolutely essential for academic freedom of expression, but also because of the example we set to society. And then, you know, we are all about reason. You know, we use our, our, our brains to think, to uh, develop ideas, to do research, to carry out education. We invest in the intellectual capital and we have this sense of legacy because through our students, universities, you know, professors keep on living because right. that's, that's what you transmit. So being clear about the value we add and being able to articulate to society at large why we are here, why, what is the value that we add is very important. But I like to say that our value is related to our values. Right. And that's why you know, the first step is make the values explicit and then behave in a way that honors those values. And if we do that, we'll also show society that this is indeed possible. What's resounding to me here in our conversation is the importance of respectful open forums and the ability to communicate them well. Right. Right. So in terms of the academic side of things, right. there are things that you want to accomplish. Now, full disclosure, I'm a University of, Florida, uh, University of Florida graduate, <laughs> so I know that you're a bit of a state rival. What do you have in terms of um, making your school better than my school and any school, not only in the state, but in the Southeast, in the United States? Well, first of all, I have huge respect for the University of Florida. It's a, it's a great university and uh, a great admiration. The, there is, you know, a, a, a sports rivalry. Sure. And, but, you know, even our athletic programs, if they're guided by this idea of, you know, what it is to be, to do respectful, um, fair competition. Right. Those are good values. Competing yes. is good so long as it's fair, so long as it's respectful. And, and so, so it brings, you know, it tries, it drives us to, to, be, to be better. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm very focused <coughs> on um, four big aspirations that I, I articulated at my inauguration, which just happened on the 29th of, of, uh, of January. And, and those four are to be the hemispheric university, the excellent university, the relevant university, and the exemplary university. And let me tell you in one sentence what each of those means. Sure. The hemispheric university means to take full advantage of our geographic location. Miami is really the crossroads of the Americas, and through that, it connects to the rest of the world. So making use of our stra strategic advantage of being located in this most cosmopolitan of cities. I'm talking of the, the entire Miami-Dade County, obviously including our home city, the city of Coral Gables. Second is the excellent university, the pursuit of excellence in ep everything, in academics, but also in the medical care we provide right. through our health system, in athletics, in administration, in, in the arts that we cultivate, the pursuit of excellence, always being better. Relevance means that while we're excellent, we also address the biggest problems facing our community, our local community, and our also the global community of which we are part. We move from scholarship to solutions, and we do that in a deliberate way. And then exemplary, what has to do with what we were talking? We embrace values and behaviors that serve as an example to society. Those are the four big aspirations, and I think if we do that, now that we're facing our first century, because the University of Miami was founded the same year as the city of Coral right. Gables, 1925. in 1925, so as we move to our centennial, I'm hoping that we'll uh, be able to achieve 
those four uh, really strategic visions for the university. So uh, I, one of the commitments I have made and I announced at my inauguration is uh, what I'm calling 100 talents for 100 years. And the idea is I'm committing to mobilize the resources, mostly through philanthropy, to endow 100 faculty positions over the next decade. Uh, now that's a very ambitious goal, um, but I think it's doable. And when you have an endowed chair, you can bring in you know, the best people. Um, and that will include a mix of senior faculty, junior faculty, also for young people, and also visiting faculty. So we can bring to Coral Gables and the entire Miami-Dade and South Florida, really bring critical masses of talent uh, around the university. So that's one very specific. On the other people, which we are very centered on, which are our students, yes. I made another commitment, which also has a 100. And that is that by our 100th anniversary, to meet 100% of student financial need. Again, a very ambitious commitment, but we want our students to be able to benefit from an education at our university without either having to pay, uh, you know, uh, or put their families at financial risk or undertaking a crushing burden of debt that then they start paying after graduation. Right. Again, a very ambitious goal, because providing high quality education is expensive. But I think everyone who has the merits and the capacity to benefit from an education at the University of Miami should be able to come without money being the, the, right. the barrier. So those are two examples of very concrete commitments as we look at our centennial on the faculty side and on the student side. So far during your tenure, what's been your favorite part being the president of the University of Miami? Without any question, it's the interaction with students. Uh, students, um, you know, creating faculty and remember university presidents in most universities in the United States are also faculty members. Uh, that's one of the great aspects of the American model. Uh, you know I am yes I am the CEO of the University of Miami and I'm responsible for the administrative and financial health but I'm also a faculty member. I, I you know I publish, I teach, I am going to start teaching next year at my own course. I meet with students and when you're a faculty member, the contact with students is both gives you a very concrete sense of legacy, but also it keeps you young <laughs> to right. be interacting right. with, with young people. So from a selfish point of view, the, the, the best thing is uh, of, of this job is that you get to interact with very smart, motivated young people who have big dreams. And, and it is also our sense of responsibility to help them, to enable them um, to realize those dreams. You're in a position now to help them achieve those dreams. So thank you so much for being here. I know you've had 100 days of listening. Thank you for giving us a chance to listen to you for a change. Well, thank you very much. I really enjoy this and I'm very grateful to the city of Coral Gables, which has been our home since our very birth. We were founded together and, and that gives the University of Miami a sense of connection to its community that I think is one of our, our most precious assets. Dr. Frank, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Once again, that was the sixth president of the University of Miami, Dr. Julio Frank. That'll do it for this edition of Coffee Talk. Remember to like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash City of Coral Gables and subscribe to our YouTube page on youtube.com slash Coral Gables TV. I'm Mike Viana. Thanks for watching. Stay beautiful, Coral Gables.